In the southeast corner of Mexico lies the peninsula they call Yucatan. Once virtually inaccessible to the traveler, it is now less than two hours from the United States mainland by jet clipper. Merida is a key point on Pan American's Golden Triangle Vacation Wonderland. Also served from California via Guatemala City, from Houston via Mexico City, from Panama and Central America via Guatemala City. Street scene in Merida, capital city of the state of Yucatan. Merida, Mexico's first melting pot. The adventurer Cortez knew these streets. Merida is a doorway to history, looking backwards more than 2,000 years beyond the centuries of the Spanish Empire to the great civilization of the Maya, an age that vanished. History now is etched in contemporary limestone, an ancient story perpetually played. In the darkness of the ruined city of Ushmal, an hour by car from Merida, the Maya reenact their rituals. Maiden offers tribute to the Maya god of rain, and ancient wars are fought again on the altar of a banished empire. Disappearance of the Maya civilization has long puzzled historians. Was it civil war, famine, or the Spanish conquest? It was quite probably a combination of all three. Spanish conquistadors burned the Maya books, and yet their secrets are indelibly fixed on temple walls. This was the dwarf. He ascended the throne in defiance of the gods by erecting this incredible temple in a single night, so the story goes. Without knowledge of the wheel or arch, the Maya were master builders. A finely wrought stone palace, a full city block in length, was the seat of government, one of the most brilliant architectural works of the Western world. Hacienda, originally built to house early groups of archaeologists, now a modern hotel. In the garden of the Hacienda, descendants of Maya warriors practice a peaceful ancient art. The Maya civilization, which was the most brilliant of ancient America, was based on the raising of corn. The changing of the seasons and the days of the farmer's year was their chief concern. The magnitude of this concern can be seen at the city of Chichen Itza, greatest of Maya cities. 
located in the center of the Yucatan Peninsula. This great pyramid served as the Maya calendar. These are told by the fall of shadows on the steps. It has 91 steps on each of its four sides and one grand platform atop. 365 steps, in all, a full year. The Maya calendar was as accurate as our own Gregorian calendar and preceded it by many years. This lofty perch commands a spectacular view of what was once the most sacred city of the Maya. Chichen Itza was once a city of 300,000. This is the hall of a thousand columns, which, in another age, supported a vast ceremonial platform reserved for the consecration of heroes. At its center stands the Temple of the Warriors, presided over by Jacques Moul, the Maya god of rain, in an attitude of serene repose. This is where basketball was probably invented. From the privacy of this tiny villa, the Maya chieftains watched as rival teams attempted to pass the ball through a two-foot hoop. A game might last two weeks. At the base of the wall, etched in stone, is their Hall of Fame. Another wall was reserved for the loser. The captain of the losing team was beheaded. This is his memorial plaque. In another corner of Chichen Itza lies the great cenote, the sacred well. In a season of despair, when the crop was poor or wars were lost, this huge watering hole became a well of sacrifice. Professional divers have recovered the bones of countless Maya maidens as well as several millions of dollars worth of gold ornaments and precious stones. Visitors to Chichen Itza stop at the inn which overlooks the Maya observatory where ancient gazers counted stars. The passing centuries have not erased the memory of their brilliant culture, for the Maya tongue is still spoken here. One hundred and fifty miles to the east of Merida lies the vast territory of Quintana Roo, which is largely uninhabited in spite of its exotic beaches and forgotten temples. Archaeologists call the men who built these monuments the Greeks of the New World. This great ruin, standing majestically with its back to the sea, was at some point in history mysteriously abandoned. Exquisite temples were left behind to crumble atop this windy palisade. A dozen miles offshore, and just minutes away by plane, lies the island of Cozumel, until recent years virtually unknown. Cozumel is Mexico's newest and most exciting vacation land, surrounded by the clearest and bluest Caribbean seas, and caressed by the gentle trade winds. latest thing in travel wear, self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, scuba for short. You can rent it in Cozumel. A good swimmer can learn to use scuba with a little practice.
a new world to explore, an underwater world of endless variation. A native boat takes you off to explore the nooks and crannies of Cozumel. Palm trees sway to the gentle lullaby of the trade winds. The waters of the Caribbean were never bluer, the skies never brighter than they are off Cozumel. Most fun of all is the lobster catch. It takes no expert to bring up more than one can eat. Afternoon at sea gives you a fantastic appetite. ride by Jet Clipper from Merida, and we're in Guatemala City.
Guatemala City, commercial center of the Republic. Guatemala City, the nation's capital. In the past few years, Spanish colonial has given way to the supremely adventurous, individual, and modern face of the 20th century. A stone and stainless steel finger points the way for all Guatemalans. Arriba, progress. The bright mosaic walls of the Social Security Building proclaim the awakening of a nation's spirit. The graceful new industrial park is dedicated to a hopeful future of growth and prosperity. City Hall is an eloquent statement of 20th century Guatemala, a statement shared by other buildings rising in this modern city. Thirty miles west of Guatemala City lies Antigua, which was once the capital of the Spanish kingdom in the New World. A city of soaring churches whose art and beauty was unequaled in the Western Hemisphere. This serenity was doomed. For three centuries, colossal earthquakes destroyed the city stone by stone leaving the twisted wreckage of a golden age. Nature has a peculiar way of punctuating the history of man and sealing off his past. Ruined churches now are public parks where blooming flowers ease the pain of broken walls. Those who seek solitude can find it here. Antigua, which was once the seat of Spanish might in America, is now a sleepy town of barely 13,000 souls who are reminded of nature's past brutality by the great volcano Agua, which looms above. Perhaps the red roar of volcanic fires inspired Guatemalan weavers. Maya culture springs to life in the ornaments of their cloth. In the highlands near Antigua, Guatemala's Indian population makes its home. The Maya lead a very special way of life here in the hills that surround Lake Atitlan. The tropic heat is gone, and the breath of eternal spring fills the air. At dawn on Sunday, the mountain roads are filled with men and women carrying enormous burdens. Their destination, Chichicastenango, a tiny village hidden in the mountains. This is the Maya marketplace and meeting place. Hoisting bundles of pottery, furniture, fabrics, potatoes, grain, loads that are often heavier than themselves, men and women from outlying villages come, some from as far as 50 miles away, as much for banter as for barter.
they scarcely speak above a whisper, and then only in the dialect of their ancient tongue. Market day in Chichicastenango is not only a time to trade, but a time to talk, and a time for silence. Worshippers spend hours upon these steps conversing with their private deities before they are ready to make oblations to their Christian God. Guatemala's Maya are pious Catholics. In a 90-minute journey by Jet Clipper from Guatemala City to Mexico City, we have caught up with the 20th century. Time is moving once again. This boulevard, El Paseo de la Reforma, is aptly described as the most beautiful in the Western Hemisphere, a watering place for travelers from every nation on the globe. corner of a happy park is a lively market for Latin America's most abundant gift, art. Fine art has nourished the Mexican soul for centuries. In Mexico, art is frequently produced by the acre. This is the famous library at their university. This too is part of Mexico's culture, the mariachis, wandering troubadours who live as troubadours have always lived, by their music. The canals of Lake Xochimilco are merry floating picnic grounds for Sunday visitors. The approach of evening does not extinguish the merriment of Mexico City. The lights of the Zocalo, the seat of government, are joyously lit, the prelude to a final night of fun. Yucatan, Guatemala, Mexico City. Knowing travelers call it the Golden Triangle. Each is an area of distinct charm and beauty. The long distant past and the exhilarating present 
intermingle in the ruins of Chichen Itza and Ushmal. The temples, the palaces, the sanctuaries, all linger long in the memory. And one remembers, too, the enchanting isle of Cozumel. The temple of Guatemala City. The incomparable beauty of the Lake Atitlan. The splendor, the sophistication of Mexico City, with its modern tempos still flavored with the charm of old Spain. Yucatan, Cozumel, Guatemala, Mexico City, they all bid you welcome. Bienvenido.